Hey, welcome back. Today, I want to talk about how to create a radial array in Blender. It's something I've been doing quite a bit lately, so I thought I'd make a video about it. So here I have a model that I put together for this video. The gun is from my Stormblade model. And I made this cylinder object so I could have something interesting to array the gun around. And I have it over here away from the origin because I want to show how you would do this on a part of your model that isn't sitting at the origin. So the first thing I need to do is move the 3D cursor because the array is going to use the 3D cursor as its origin point. So I need it to be at the center of the cylinder. So I'll select the cylinder, then hit Shift S and choose Cursor to Active. And now you see the 3D cursor has moved to the center of the cylinder. And before I do anything else, I'm going to select the gun and turn off the subdivision surface modifier. Because if I don't, it's going to really bog down the array process. And I'm also going to hit Control A and reset rotation and scale just to make sure I don't have anything weird happen. So now with the gun selected, I'll switch to edit mode. And this gun has a lot of different pieces, and I want to make sure I select all of them. So I'll switch to face selection mode, then hit Alt-Z to switch to x-ray mode, and then window select the entire gun, and now I'll hit Alt-Z again to get out of x-ray mode. Now I'm going to select the spin tool. And you see this blue arc appears down here? And if I grab one of these endpoints and drag it, you see I'm starting to get an array happening. But there are a few problems. First of all, it's arraying on the wrong axis. You can see down here it's arraying around the z-axis. But for this array, I want it to be on the x-axis. So I'll set x to 1, and I'll set z to 0. And now it's moving in the right direction, but it's stretching across or something. So I'm going to enable this Use Duplicates option. And now I'm getting individual objects, but the array is stopping right here. And I want it to go all the way around the cylinder. So I need to set the angle to 360 degrees. And that's looking pretty good. But the guns are overlapping. So I'll set the steps to 8. And that's looking really good. So I'll we'll switch back to object mode. And there you go. And now I'll show you the other way to do a radial array. I already have the 3D cursor sitting at the center of the cylinder. So I'll select the gun and then right click and set origin to 3D cursor. And that will move the object origin to the cursor. So now if I rotate it, it rotates around the cylinder. And again, I'll hit Control A and Reset Rotation and Scale to make sure my transforms are reset. Because for this array, if you don't reset your transforms, you will definitely get some strange results in your array. Next, I'm going to hide the cylinder for a minute. Then I'll hit Shift A and add an empty sphere. And I'll make it a little smaller, something like 0.5. And now I'll select the gun and come over to the Modifiers panel and add an Array modifier. And right away you can see I have an array starting. And if I increase the count, you see it's moving in a linear direction. So I'll disable the Relative Offset option and enable the Object Offset option. And in here you see I can choose the object that I want to array around. So I'll click on the eyedropper and then select the empty. And right now nothing is happening and that's because I need to switch to Object Properties and tell Blender how to array the gun. So here in the Transform section I need to specify which axis I want to array around. Which in this case will be the x-axis. And I need to do a little math to determine the angle of rotation based on the number of objects I want to array. So, like before, I want 8 guns arraying around the cylinder. So if I divide 360 degrees by 8, that gives me 45 degrees. So I'll put that in here for the X rotation value. 
And now if I go back to the modifier panel, I can set my count to 8. And then unhide the cylinder. And there you go. So the array modifier requires a little more work, but they both get the job done. Okay, that's it for this one. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. And as always, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.